every Saturday and Sunday. CC. Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari The Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Bada Dari The Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Bada Dari Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Tira Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Tira Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Lama, Hare Lama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Shiva Prabhupada ki jai, Grantara Sri Chaitanya Chanamrita ki jai, Sri Sri Gora Nithai ki jai, Jai Sri Sri Radha Govardhana, Krishna Balaram jai, Giri Govardhana ki jai, Vrinda Devi, Tulsi Devi Maharani ki jai, Oh glorious to the assembled devotees, Oh glorious to the assembled devotees, Oh glorious to the assembled devotees, Oh glorious to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga, Gauru Pemanandi, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Unitananda Shri. So we're reading from the Sri Chaitanya Chanamrita. I'm going to see my glasses are falling out. There they are. 
Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nitananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nitananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda So we're on the Sri Chaitanya Chandra Adi Leela on the very last chapter. This is the pastimes of the Lord in his youth and we're on verse we have today we've been given 196 to 200 if I can find them. So it's a quick little catch up for those because most some of you aren't here every weekend. But we uh, this is this because when you do a couple of verses, a few verses every weekend, it's going to I figured out it's going to take us maybe ten years to get through the CC. We've been going for a number of years. We're still on the on the Adilila, and this pastime we I remember we started this about two months ago because I gave a class on it. So this is. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has just uh, gathered all the forces and they've marched on the Shankazi because he was trying to stop the chanting. So this is so they've already arrived there with all their torches and he's shaking because you know you can imagine a million or so Hari, fired up Hari Krishnas with torches in their hands and chanting very loudly, with led by Goranga Mahaprabhu himself. <laughs> so there, it's quite a it's a very ecstatic moment for the Hare Krishna movement because this is the inauguration, you could say, of the taking it to the people, you know, against against all odds. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there. He's had some conversation with the Shankazi, and Shankazi revealed uh, uh, something very special that happened to him. He wanted to bring Lord Chaitanya aside to tell him, but Lord Chaitanya said, "You can speak in front of my confidential companions." And he told him about this dream that he's had. And in this dream, this big lion faced personality with a human body jumped on his chest and, and chastised him severely. And he said, you know, he ready to rip his heart out. <laughs> he said, you stop harassing my devotees, you know. And this, so this happened. So, that, so we're, we're more or less just after this moment. And then we're going to hear what else. So the Shankazi is speaking himself, the Gurangam Mapabu at the moment. Is that all right for a quick recap? So verse 196 is... What's on the board? Can't be. Okay, we'll just quick... We'll, we'll just, I'll chant it a couple of times. One, gen, one gentleman, one lady, and then we'll... Because it's almost time for breakfast. Tabe se yavanere amita puchila Hindu Hari Bare Tara Svababa Janita Tabe Se Yavanere Amita Puchila Hindu Hari Bare Tara Svababa Janila Tabe Se Yavanere Amita Puchila Hindu Hari Bale Taras Baba Janila This is Tabe, then say that Yabanere from the meat eaters. Ami, I, Ta, certainly, Puchila. 
inquired. Hindu, the Hindu, Hari Bale, says Hari, Tara, his, Svabhava, Nature, Janila, I know. Translation, and I'm going to read a few verses in a purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Translation, I then, this is Shankarji speaking again. I then inquired from these Yavanas. I know that these Hindus by nature chant Hari Hari. Verse 197. The Hindus chant the names of Hari because that is the name of their God. But you are Mohammedan meat eaters. Why do you chant the names of Hindu God? I think he's speaking to his assistants here. Text number 198. The meat, the meat, yes, the meat eater replied. <laughs> Sometimes I joke with the Hindus. Some of them are called Krishna Das and some are called Ram Das. Text 199. Some of them are called Hari Das. They always chant Hari Hari. And thus I thought they would steal the riches from someone's house. Text 200. Since that time my tongue also always vibrates the sound of Hari Hari. I have no desire to say it, but still my tongue says it. I do not know what to do. This is one of the Muslim guards. <laughs> Purport. Sometimes demoniac non-devotees, not understanding the potency of the holy name, make fun of the Vaishnavas when the Vaishnavas chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. This joking is also beneficial for such persons. Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th chapter, excuse me, 2nd chapter, verse 14, indicates that the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, even if joking in the course of ordinary discussion, in indicating something extraneous or in, in neglig negligence, is called Namabas, which is chanting that is almost on the transcendental stage. This Namabas stage is better than Nama Aparad. Namabas awakens the supreme remembrance of Lord Vishnu. When one remembers Lord Vishnu, he becomes free from material enjoyment. Thus, he gradually comes forward towards the transcendental service of the Lord and becomes eligible to chant the holy name of the Lord in the transcendental position. And the verse again, Since that time my tongue always vibrates the sounds of Hari Hari. I have no desire to say it, but still my tongue says it. I do not know what to do. This is one of the guards. <laughs> They were sent out to chastise the devotees. Om Magana Tibananda Shyaganam Gana Salakaya. Sakshu Sumitam Yana Tasmaya Shigurvenma. So we I think we're very familiar with this Nama bus. <laughs> we experience we've all experienced it and we are still experiencing it and we see other people experience this. So this is the the mercy of Gurangamapu is quite extraordinary. I'm gonna read a little few little things, snippets which came across my little mind while I read reading this verse. Because, like I said, it's been years since we started this. And if you go back to chapter 3 of this Adi Leela, just a refresher for those that, that need the refreshing, but it's always nice to hear. This is uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, this is Krishna himself. Krishna himself speaking here, if I can find it. Excuse my notes are a bit disorganized, but that's so, so Krishna was uh, at the end of Dwapa Yuga, this is text ten of chapter three of Adi Leela. At the end of Dwapa Yuga of the twenty eighth Divya Yuga, Lord Krishna appears on earth with the full paraphernalia of his eternal Rajdam. Servitude, it was Dasya, friendship, sakya, parental affection, vatsalya and conjugal love, Sringara. Other four transcendental mellows, rasas, by the devotees who relish, who cherish these four mellows, Lord Krishna is subdued. Absorbed in such transcendental love, Lord Krishna enjoys with Vraj, in Vraj with his devoted servants, friends, parents and conjugal lovers. Lord Krishna enjoys his transcendental pastime as long as he wishes and then he disappears after disappearing. However, he thinks thus, so this is Krishna's thinking now, Imagine we've got access to Krishna's thinking <laughs> by the mercy of our charities. Krishna's thinking, for a long time, I have not bestowed unalloyed loving service to me upon the inhabitants of the world. 
Without such loving attachment, the existence of the material world is useless. Text 15. Elsewhere in the world, people worship me according to spiritual injunctions, but simply by following such regulative principles, one cannot attain the loving sentiments of the devotees in Rajbhumi. Knowing my opulence as the whole world looks upon me with awe and veneration, a devotion made feeble by such reverence does not attract me. Text 18. By performing such regular devotional service in awe and veneration, one may go to Vaikuntha and attain the four kinds of liberation. Text 19. I shall personally inaugurate the religion of the age, Nam Sankirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name. I shall make the whole world dance in ecstasy, realizing the four mellows of loving devotional service. I shall accept the role of a devotee and I shall teach devotional service by practicing itself. Unless one practices devotional service himself, he cannot teach it to others. This conclusion is indeed confirmed throughout the Gita and Bhagavatam. So this is the one of the main external reasons for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu coming. It's quite extraordinary. And now we're experiencing the very beginning of this distribution. Of the, and interesting enough, all aspects of Garanga Mahaprabhu's preaching, including Nam Prabhu himself, the holy name, are in this mood. <laughs> The holy name in this age, the holy name is always extraordinary and very powerful and very compassionate. But in this age, especially, especially in, in, endowed by Goranga Mahaprabhu's mercy, which is no other than the, the pure compassion of Srimati Radharani, saturated with this. And we can see in this pastime, even these meat eaters that describe here, the Mohammedans, even the, the Hindus with the, the Kami Kandas, the worshippers of the demigods, they're all chanting. Unwillingly. Nam Prabhu has already gone out there. Mahaprabhu is not, hasn't even arrived yet. And they, they're out there. And we experience the same thing. The devotees go on Hari Nam. And we've all come across this. You know, this, I mean, Especially those of us that weren't born in the movement. We saw the Hare Krishnas in the streets. And we made a joke about them. Or, I, mean, I remember I'd, I'd, I'd run through this, the Hari Nam party down the middle. You know, one of those tough guys that go through and try and... But you know, Hare Krishna was banging into my ears. And then we'd go home and say, did you see the Hare Krishnas today? I worked in the city, I used to see the Hare Krishnas go by. So we're continuously uh, chanting this number bus, which Prabhupada explains is almost the pure name. He says that also in the sixth canto that's been quoted here, second chapter towards the end, last verse. He says that Ajamil's chanting was almost pure chanting. It's quite extraordinary. And it's so powerful that it, it liberates the living entity. Ajamil was a very sinful uh, person at the time and as we know he chanted not in, in pure love for the Lord but he was calling out his little, little boy uh, Narayan and that chanting alone brought the powerful Vishnu Dudas to his rescue. Uh, even though technically the Yamadudas came and said there was a list of sinful activities this is the reaction you've got to have, let's go, they're ready to take him away. But Vishnu said, no, no, no. This is the mercy of Namabhas, of Krishna's holy name. And just on that note, if you don't... If you, I bought the Buryat Bhagavamrita, which is a very sacred book. And I'm going to read just a short passage from it on this point. This is Srila Sanatana Goswami's very first book and the first book of the Goswamis. It's... And these, Srila Sanatana Goswami is the direct disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. A very important book. Srila Prabhupada wanted us to read this. He said, to, if you want to know about Krishna, if you want, about, you want to know about devotional service, and if you want to know about devotees, you must read this book. So it's a very important book. And in, it's in two parts. The second part, I'm going to read a section from. This is Gob Kumara, a, a, a devotee, through, by chain, the, the, the mantra given by a spiritual master, uh, obeying the spiritual master, chanting dutifully his Gopal mantra, we follow his journey all the way back to Goloka Vrindavan. It's very beautiful to read, very inspiring. So this is uh, this is from the Bhriya Bhagavad It's just one verse. I'm going to read for now. This is G Ganesh speaking. We all know who Ganesh is, right? Lord Shiva. So uh, Gopkumara has been going for some time now. He's at the point where he's actually got out of the universe. Is in, is in the abode of Lord Shiva and he's also noticing all these Vishnu Vaikuntha Dutas coming and going 
is outside the universe and they're going into different universes. Isn't that incredible? He's outside the universe witness, witnessing this and he's inquiring who are, these, who are these people. And Ganesh says, Sri Ganesh continued, These persons cherish only devotional service to the Lord. They travel as they please, spreading pure devotion everywhere. They save the Lord's devotees from all fears, even at the time of death. If those devotees have but once had even a reflection of the Lord's name on the tip of their tongues or the path to their ears. That's all. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a huge qualification, is it? It's just our, our kind. So the Lord is looking for any excuse <laughs> to grab us. But he, I'll read something interesting on this point, actually, because the question might say, if he loves us so much, he wants us to go back to Godhead so much, why don't you just come and get us? Just shake us and wake up and let's go. But I'll read something that explains that. The commentary on the, on the verse I just read, it says, Here Sri Ganesh explains why the messengers of Vaikuntha visit all the universes, acting on their own initiative. Remember, these are liberated souls. They're not governed by karma and the modes of material nature. They can do, they're actually free. They can actually do what they want. It's not like here we think we can do what we want, but we can't really. We think we can, we think we're free and independent and, and supreme controllers. We are fully controlled and conditioned by the material energy. We're in prison, imprisoned. But here these, these living entities, they can do whatever they want. They can go wherever they want, whenever they want. So it says, according, acting on their own initiatives, they travel everywhere to spread devotional service to the Supreme Lord, eager to distribute fearlessness to the Lord's devotees. Even though Vaishnavas have nothing to fear from anything material, they still fear obstructions to their bhakti. The Va uh, Vaikuntha Vasis always endeavour to help Vaishnavas everywhere overcome impediments to devotional progress. They protect anyone who has at least once chanted or heard the holy name of Lord Vishnu, or even a shadow of his name, hearted neglectfully, or in jest, contempt, or pain. <laughs> It's pretty extraordinary, you know. You get one of these marsh fly bites you, and you're Krishna. That's it. Like the Vishnu dudes will come, <laughs> will come for you. So kind, right? So the Nam Prabhu is very, very merciful, and this is because of the desire of the Lord. He wa He wants us, <laughs> even though we don't. We, we. I'll read this last section because it's very, very beautiful, and the time's about out. I had many, many things I could have said if we had the extra half an hour, but you're getting the essence of it. So this is also the Briya Bhagavamrita. So now in this section here, Gob Kamara's I'm going to, just only going to read, what is it, one, two, three, four verses, five verses. He's now made it back to Vaikuntha. Now, for, for this particular devotee, it's not his final destination because he's an eternal coward boy. He wants to, he, he's, still, he's still discovering his uh, end goal. It's, it's inter a very interesting character. But here we're going to get an insight to Krishna's Mind towards the living entities also, right? So this is not Ganesh speaking. We read it on Ganesh. Okay, this is the Lord Himself speaking. So Gopakumar has just arrived in Vaikuntha. You can imagine after millions of lifetimes, and you finally busted through the material coverings, and you arrive in Vaikuntha. Even though in the case of this particular devotee, it's not his final destination, but he's arrived in a spiritual world. And Narayan and Krishna are the same person, right? Papa said that Krishna's Narayan's God in the office and Krishna is God at home. So the same person but different mood like that. So he's, he's and, and this is why Gopakumara doesn't stay there because it's not his mood. He likes God at home. He wants to go to Goloka and jump on Krishna's back in the, in the, in the office. You can't do that. You got to you got to sit at your desk and behave. <laughs> so this is from now we're, we've skipped ahead to the fourth chapter of the second volume. I brought this just to have the sacred, sacred association of this book, even though I've printed it all out. Uh, this is 481. The Supreme Lord said, this is speak, him speaking to, to Gob Kamara, Welcome, welcome, my dear boy. I'm fortunate, most fortunate to meet you here. For so long I have been eager to see you. <laughs> so Krishna's missing us. Commentary, this is the commentary is by Srila Sanata Goswami. Translated by Gopi Pranapabhu and published by the BBT. Commentary. Hoping to calm Gopakumara, the most compassionate Lord greeted him as a welcome guest. 
The Lord stated honestly that he had been waiting a long time for Gobkamara to come to Vaikuntha. So this throws a bit of light on the origin of the living entity, right? This indicates he's returning home. Text 82. My dear friend, you have passed many lifetimes without paying any attention to me at all. <laughs> Forgotten Krishna. For so long, hope had me dancing like a fool, thinking, quote, perhaps in this lifetime, or this, or this, or this, he will finally turn his face towards me. Krishna's is onerous. Text 84. Oh, sorry, there's a, there's a short uh, purport here. Even though Gopkumar had forgotten his Lord for many lifetimes, Lord had never forgotten him. Lord wanted Gopkumar to know this and also to know how eager the Lord had always been to regain the association of his devotee. Text 84. But I could not find no pretext on which to bring you to my abode, dear brother, and still follow the t- I, and still I follow the timeless laws that I must have created. So this little short purple explains why Krishna doesn't just grab us. <laughs> uh, commentary: Since the Supreme Lord is all powerful, why didn't He simply find a way to bring God Kumara t- to Him sooner? The Lord establishes the laws of the universe which are enunciated in the Vedas and other scriptures, and he chooses to adhere by, to his own restrictions. As long as the living entities want to control and enjoy their own world, he does not interfere. Only when they show by calling out his names that they want to return to him, does he again reveal himself. In previous lives, God Kamara had never chanted the names of Lord Narayan, even unintentionally or in jest. If he at least vibrated a shadow of the Lord's name, he could have been delivered, like Ajamil. In any case, now Gop Kamara is finally returning home. This is very, very exciting. So the, this is the what's happening in this pastime. Nam Prabhu's busted out. <laughs> He's gone out, and it's everybody's vibrating in a holy name. All those Muslims, the Shankazi, they're all liber- liberated. Now, it's just in, like in the case of Ajamil, liberated doesn't mean you go back home. But you you come to the platform of uh, engage being, being able to engage in devotional service. Ajamil, as we know, he, he had the darshan and the protection of the Vaikuntha Vasis. They came at that moment because he chanted that name. He did nothing else, and then he became enlightened from that dialogue that went on between them and the Vishnu and the Yamadudas. And then he went to Hardwar, performed a very strict devotional service, became purified. Achieved prem and then went back home. So it doesn't give you prem, the Nambasa. It's a abasya, it's a reflection, a shadow of the holy name. But it's very, very powerful. Much like Prabhupada says, and much better than Namabas, uh, Namaparad. Namaparad can cause all sorts, of ha- all sorts of havoc in our spiritual life. So anyway, it's time for breakfast. I would love to set about a thousand other things because it's an unlimited subject. But uh, yes, yeah, so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving the holy name to all and this is his desire in this particular age which is one one kali yuga out of one thousand cycles and one day brahma that mahaprabhu comes the and and, and takes the opportunity of the yuga dharma which is distributing harinam but adds that extra uh, conjugal uh, brajbasi uh, blessings that normally is not there normally in Lagu Bhagavan Rita, Sri Rupa Goswami says that normally it's a Sakshavesh avatar that comes in Kali Yuga and establishes the uh, the Yuga Dharma, but the, generally the the result is Vaikuntha. But in this stage, Chaitanya Mahabhu is given the, the highest uh, benedictions to the lowest living entities of this age, so through the mercy of the Holy Name. And also, even Lord Nishungade, when he appeared, <laughs> On the Shankazi, even he was merciful. He didn't normally in Lord Nishunga is pretty vicious and wants to rip things apart, especially when he's angry, when his devotees are being harassed. But even he, he was compassionate and kind. And I remember when Lord Nishunga came to Mayapur, because he was a very ferocious form of Nishunga. Whereas in Mayapur is Ugra of Nishunga. He's that in the form when he's the most angriest, he's coming out of the pillar this, because Iranyakasipu is about to kill his devotee. Prahlad Mahari is so angry. And it said that form, you just don't, you don't worship that form. Even the Stapatis said, no, you can't do it. when they were requested to carve this form. 
But then they consulted. I think he had a dream. Consulted the guru, had a dream. I can't remember the story. But anyway, they agreed to do a Friscon. And later on, what I did, I did a course, and it was a difficult journey back because it, when that when the Lord is in the back of the truck would go past the the what do they call those the toll gates? They would lift the tarp and go <laughs> quick, and and even the, even the barn he'd been in, the shed where he'd been carved, had burned down, had burned down. The, and the stop he said originally, if you have you worship this form, you'll burn down your whole village. He's so angry. So, but when he comes to my he becomes like a little kitten. Because, and I did a course with Sridhar Maharaj, and he was saying that the, 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 whatever deities you install in a dham, they take on the mood of the predominating deity, which is Goranga Mahaprabhu, which is very merciful, very loving, and very compassionate. So, our Nishungadev in my poor is not going to burn anybody. He's going to burn the impurities from our heart and give us Krishna Prem. That's the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, we'll finish on that note, even though we can go for. Any quick comments or questions? Otherwise, the bell hasn't gone yet. <laughs> you want to say anything, anyone, quickly or not? We can stop here. No. Anyway, something to meditate on. The, the, the kindness of the Lord is wanting, wanting us and he's manifested himself just to put a lasso around our hearts and take us home, whether we're screaming or not wanting it. It's basically said that he wants, once you've chanted that number bus, Krishna uses that as an excuse to interfere with your independence. So now we can't do what we want anymore. <laughs> We're sort of been roped in by the mercy of the Lord and his devotees. Okay, thank you very, very much. And all glories to Srila Prabhupada, glories to Nam Prabhu, glories to Garanga Mahaprabhu, Gaur Pamanandi, Hari Hari Krishna, there you go. Right on the money. No problem. Right on the salaries. I squeezed the